what we'll do is we'll start with District 2 first, and that will be Powell Kim. You did excellent. Uh, it being Halloween, I thought I'd scare the crap out of you today. <laughs> Government is dying, and there's not a darn thing I or anybody else can do about it. $14 trillion in admitted debt, uh, $22 trillion in actual debt that you can certainly show uh, on hand uh, in other costs that they don't include in that $14 trillion. Uh, U.S. Comptroller General two years ago, his final report, <laughs> released saying it was $60 trillion in actual debt once you tossed in Social Security, Medicaid, Medicare, and the federal pension plans extended out. And uh, once you toss in the derivatives market, just for the United States alone, you're now up to $133 trillion in debt. That's it. That, that doesn't, doesn't even include the states and the lesser governments for their debt. So that adds up to enslavement for your children and your grandchildren, they have no economic future, zero. I don't care what any incumbent or anybody seeking office wants to promise you, it is over. The United States government is finished. It, like all governments, is nothing more than a gang with a flag. That makes its future actions quite predictable. It will contract, it will grow smaller, severely protecting only its tax collecting, apparatus and its enforcement apparatus. If you rely on a government check, more than half Americans do by the way, expect either that check to disappear or government will hyperinflate its currency and that $1,600 check or more that may get sent out won't even buy a loaf of bread. If you work for the government, expect to lose your job unless you're a tax collector or a cop. Those are the only two jobs that matter to government when push comes to shove. Okay, uh, first question that we have from the uh, disability community is, how will you maintain Social Security for future generations? You have one minute, Jim. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, I won't. Nobody can. Social Security will die. It'll be one of the first things they cut. They'll try like heck not to because it's got powerful influence, but ultimately it will fail. It'll collapse under its own weight. It is an enormous expenditure, even though it's not anywhere near the same as Medicare and Medicaid, but it's still out there, uh, and more and more people now are retiring, so it's over. They're going to try to raise the age to 70, 78. They're going to do what they did uh, when they first created this program, which is create an age limit and circumstances so high that nobody will qualify for it and will die off. Well, the problem is there's going to be probably about a 10-year gap in which that uh, that amount of money that they want to have released back into the system is not going to be available, and it's over. All right. What do you see as barriers that can be removed to increase employment opportunities for people with disabilities? Limiting health care. If I'm an employer, private employer, and um, I have, I am required by government to provide health care for my employees, there is no way in hell I would hire somebody who's disabled. Now, you can say you can pass all the laws saying you can or can't do that, and that's fine, it doesn't matter. I will come up with some excuse why I do not hire that individual, because I can pretty much figure that that person is probably going to be a healthcare detriment and be sucking on a limited pool of money compared to all the other employees. And that is one of the reasons why people with disabilities predominantly work for the United States government because they don't have that problem, taxpayers can pay for it. What are your thoughts on health care reform? <laughs> yeah, I know, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, personally, if you look at Obama's bill that was passed, that, man, that huge mammoth bill that literally no congressman bothered to read before they passed it, over half of it has absolutely nothing to do with health care. Um, <clears throat> 
and well, that's typical of Washington. I think it's basically healthcare will be going the same way of um, Social Security. It's getting worse and worse. You have Canadians coming here for their health care because they're standing in line. And you're going to see us going to Mexico for our health care. We actually already are, but on the border clinics down there. And um, eh, in the end, they're going to keep squeezing and squeezing until it all collapses. And I actually encourage it. Bring it on. I think it's great. The faster they keep expending money, the sooner it gets done and we go on to something else. But something else is going to be quite horrible in the beginning, but maybe from that, something good will come out of it. Do you support the Americans with Disabilities Act and other federal disability rights laws? No, if I was elected, I'd probably support the elimination of uh, um, probably all of the federal laws simply because they're so onerous now and you have absolutely no chance of knowing what any of them are and what they cover. In fact, it doesn't even matter. If they want to find you in violation of the laws, they just pull something out of a hat and say, you're violating that, and there's plenty of judges that back them up. So, I'm, you know, Americans with Disabilities Act was just another, you know, thing that told businesses what they had to or had not to do. And it sounds great in practice, but in reality, it's just infringement on businesses. The truth of the matter is, if you want to, if you had a business that you knew was being discriminatory to handicapped people, why would you actually go there and do business with them? And that's the thing. Pick it up. Be out front. There's nothing better, more photogenic than handicapped people out front picketing. Time. Uh, Medicare has an in-home rule for complex durable medical equipment, which is basically electronic wheelchairs or something of that nature. Um, if you're able to ambulate throughout your home, you're not eligible to receive a mobility device. What are your thoughts about removing this in-home exclusion for people with disabilities to get uh, power wheelchairs? I'd love to remove it, along with the law that provides it. Um, once again, when you are when you're advocating for this, you're advocating, you're literally advocating, you're hiring a thug to put a gun to people's heads who are earners and say, turn over your cash to us because we have a better use for it and we have a more noble use for it and we are, uh, essentially that money that you have belongs to us. And that's wrong, it's more smarter than you. Yeah, Ron Paul has introduced legislation to get rid of, or to at least audit the Federal Reserve that was started in 1913 by Woodrow Wilson, uh, a Democrat. And I want to know what steps would you take to uh, make sure that the Federal Reserve, well, would you want the Federal Reserve to be audited? And if so, what steps would you take to ensure it gets audited? It'd be nice to audit the Federal Reserve. It'd be nice to imprison people who are in the Federal Reserve. It, it's not going to happen. Uh, ultimately, they're not going to allow an audit. There's no way in heck they'll, they'll allow a real audit. And it's just typical, even if we did have an audit, it'd be a typical, like the 9-11 Truth Commission, where two years later, the head and vice chair of the commission write a book saying, yeah, we knew we were being lied to, but we signed under oath that all this stuff was good. It's like. What does it matter? You get these blue ribbon panels, they investigate anything. And in the end, you know, everybody, the press pulls it up and rah rahs over it. And everybody says, ah, we, we accomplished something. And in the end, it's all a freaking lie. All right. In case you didn't know this, I didn't come here to rescue government, but to tell, yourself, tell you to prepare yourselves to rescue yourselves. You must survive, and there is very little time left. Two years ago, I, I basically was saying the same things I'm saying then, and I actually thought we'd make it to the 2010 elections. I no longer believe that we'll make it to the 2012 elections without things being very seriously different than they are today. <clears throat> when the crash comes, and it will come, you do not want to be holding on to large quantities of cash or having investments that pay you in U.S. dollars. Take the tax hit now, convert your investments into gold and silver, the dollar is going to zero value, gold and silver never will. The Mormons encourage each of their members to have a two-year food supply on hand. That's a great idea. 
one can quickly put a two or three month, uh, a three or four month food supply on hand under your bed or in your closets. If you lose your source of income, it sure is nice knowing where three or four months worth of food is coming from after that. And start a garden, raise chickens, that may sound parental, and it is, but you really want to have those talents in place now rather than wait until you really need them later on to have them up and going. And that includes having the seeds that you want to plant already on hand. And I'm giving my 30 seconds back to you. All right, thank you so much for...